The Bulls are such a funny team, man. They somehow never cease to amaze me, both in a good and bad way. And those swings happen literally from quarter to quarter. And I wasn't alone either. I saw a lot of people on Twitter throughout the first half talking about how it's going to be a long season. Kenny Beecham of King of the Fourth Quarter saying how we just have to wait for eight months with a screenshot of the Tankathon simulator and the Bulls getting the number one pick. I mean, the Bulls looked really bad in the first half, even into the third quarter, really, when you saw the Hawks come out of the locker room with that 7-0 run to start the second half and go up by 17. This after the Bulls had started playing a little bit better and making strides in the right direction to close out the half. But yeah, I mean, the Bulls just came out of this game looking lethargic, very poor effort, especially on defense where the Hawks were getting easy lobs like you were watching the All-Star game where guys were just kind of standing around and watching. And like, we all knew the Bulls defense was going to be bad this season after losing Alex Caruso. But their defense through the first 28 minutes of this game or so was especially bad. And I remember being incredibly frustrated because throughout the start of this season, even when the Bulls have looked bad and despite their poor record, I always said, well, at least the effort is there. They might be sloppy at times and they turn the ball over like there's no tomorrow, but at least they play hard and actually play team basketball. And watching them in the first half, it looked like a repeat of last season in terms of the vibe, but with less talent. And I was just like, man, this is the last thing I want to see. Like, if this team is going to be bad, at least have it be fun bad and a team that actually plays with energy and gives it their all when they're out on the court. And coming off of a four game losing streak, I was just baffled that these guys weren't playing with a sense of pride to actually try and win a game. But hey, sure enough, after that 7-0 start of the third quarter and the Hawks went up 17, Billy Donovan calls a timeout, said something to the guys that worked because they completely turned things around from that point forward and really took off of the fourth quarter where they turned a 17 point deficit into a 14 point lead and ultimately won the game by 12 points, dominating the Hawks 35 to 15 in the fourth quarter. I mean, the Hawks are just not a good team. Like, let's be real. This isn't like they were going up against the Oklahoma City Thunder, an impressive comeback win. I really have no idea what the Hawks are going to do or what they're going to do with their team going forward because they're more stuck in no man's land than the Bulls are. And they actually owe the Spurs three first round picks in the DeJounte Murray trade. I need to do a video on them on the NBA channel. But anyway, I digress. Regardless, though, of it being a mediocre team like the Hawks, still impressive how the Bulls just completely turned things around in the fourth quarter. We always talked about how, well, what are the Bulls going to do in these moments when it comes to closing out a game when there's no DeMar DeRozan? Well, they had no problems in finishing out the Hawks, kept it cool, calm, and collected, took care of the ball, took smart shots, moved the ball well, and they actually finally started hustling on the defensive end. The first person I actually wanted to call out from this game, which might surprise some of you, but that's Patrick Williams. Pat's numbers aren't going to jump out at you in the box score from this game. 10 points, missed all of his threes, but his aggression, his decisiveness on both ends of the floor made it to where you could argue that this was probably his best game of the season. And he was by far and away the Bulls' best defender tonight. Played great defense on Risha Shea, on Johnson, Dyson Daniels, guarding multiple positions, and his play impact winning. A plus 11 on the night, a team high for the Bulls. Pat finished with 10.7 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. I will say, we've been seeing more assertiveness from Pat in the last few games. It seems like he's kind of getting a little more comfortable out there as the season has gone on. Still not to the level I would like to see, but it's improving. That said, it's still the No Excuses Tour for Pat this season. So yeah, you still need to be playing better, Pat. Uh, Vucevic, I'm telling you, man, like I said in my last video, this is the best case scenario for the Bulls. I keep thinking, all right, well, his production is eventually going to taper off a bit. 10 games in, and he's still playing solid. Tonight, he goes 8 for 13, 2 for 4 from 3, 18 points, 12 rebounds, 2 steals. I'm not going to get my hopes up just yet, and the Bulls may be even landing some kind of draft capital for him by the trade deadline, but we'll see. If he keeps up this kind of play, who knows? The Bulls scoring, by the way, in general tonight was very well-rounded, evenly dispersed, eight players in double figures. Like, when was the last time that happened for the Bulls? Aodosumu, incredible off the bench tonight, as he usually is going up against the Hawks, specifically Trey Young. He wasn't guarding Trey most of the night as he was tasked with guarding some of the Hawks' wings, but yet again, Trey put up another stinker from a shooting standpoint against the Bulls, going 6 for 16 and 6 turnovers. He did have 16 assists, though. I mean, he is one of the best passers in the game and great at running the pick and roll. But Ayodesumu, absolutely phenomenal tonight. 19 points, 7 for 10 from the floor to go along with 4 assists. I was also really impressed with what I saw from Julian Phillips and his minutes off the bench, very active, hustling for loose balls, knew where he needed to be on offense to get some great shots. 
Uh, Kobe White didn't have the most efficient game. He struggled from the field a bit, but hit some big time shots to really seal it for the Bulls in the closing minutes. Still managed to finish the game with 18 points, four rebounds, five assists, and actually had three steals as well. You know, that's what I love about Kobe. He's not a great defender, but he's got very active hands and is quick in getting to the passing lanes to break up a play. He'll hustle on that end of the floor for you, even if he's not the best on-ball defender. Zach Levine was back in action after missing uh, the last few games and played well. Didn't shoot the three ball well, but still finished with 18 points and actually did a great job at running the floor. Had seven assists in this game too. And then Josh Giddy didn't play that much in this game. Billy favored Io over him in this one, which makes sense because Io was playing a hell of a game. But even then, Javon Carter was getting some minutes. I wasn't expecting that. Not saying it was because Giddy was having a bad game. He still finished with 13 points, six rebounds, and seven assists. But the Bulls making that comeback, that run initially happened with Giddy on the bench. And so Billy decided to run with his guys that were bringing the Bulls back into the game. He did eventually bring back Giddy, and he played well to finish out the game and finished it a plus three on the night. So yeah. What looked like was going to be a terrible loss somehow turned into a pretty solid win and an obliteration in the fourth quarter where the Hawks just fell apart. So the Bulls are now sitting four and six on the season and look out, they now take on the undefeated Cleveland Cavaliers, which it's insane to me that the Cavs, through all their close games so far this season, they're now 11 and 0. But you know what? The Bulls have been known for breaking streaks. I'm calling it right now. The Bulls are going to win this game, unless there's an injury to one of their key players, but I'm saying they're winning this game bookmark it that'll be on monday so let me know what you guys thought of the game tonight as well as what you think the bulls will do on monday against the Cavs. as always be sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one